Welcome back to Dark Corner Studios, and today we're going to be building an editing rig for your podcast. It's pretty cheap, and it's real simple. Stick around, let's do this. This is Aiden Wolf. So this is basically the editing rig we're going to be building. No real flashy RGB, nothing really outstanding about it, but it is a phenomenal build for very little money. In fact, I got this puppy built for $430. This is one of two rigs that I actually had to build. All these still have their parts in them, but I'm building these for my wife's work and they're doing some podcasting at this point and they needed rigs for this. So it got me thinking, well, maybe you would like some rigs as well. This rig is pretty simple, but it's also cheaper than your average laptop. Now, for a cheap laptop, you spend about three, four hundred dollars. This is the same, but the upgrade path on this thing puts you well beyond that laptop in a year, year and a half tops. Now, while this might be bare bones, there's little tweaks you can make to this system that will actually power it enough so you can be pretty decent gamer if you want it on the side. This thing will handle everything editing you can throw at it. The only thing about this rig is it won't be able to handle video very well at the start. There's a few tweaks you can also do for that. Now, if you wanna check it out down in the video description, I have all these parts and their prices. So let's get this thing all set up and ready to go. And I'll show you exactly how easy it is to build your own PC rig. Okay, so going through exactly what we have for this computer, we're building on the Ryzen platform. And the reason for this is simple. These things are upgradable. Uh, it's ridiculous how powerful you can make this machine with just a few extra dollars spent. You can go upwards of 16 cores and 32 threads on a mainstream platform, which if you have no idea what that means, is real fast. So we're starting out at the low end because this is an AMD Ryzen 3. 3200G. It has integrated graphics, so you don't have to worry about purchasing a graphics card. Next up, we have the B450 HDV R4.0. It's a very sexy name, and this is your entry-level motherboard. It's a B450. You're probably not going to be able to get the 16-core uh, 32 thread mounted onto this, but for now, it's a great start, and this is going to get you on the road. Later on, you can upgrade this motherboard very, very easily. But right now, it's going to be a good start. And for only about $70, this thing is a great value. For your operating system, we've got the Kingston 240 gig SSD. This is going to be just enough room to get your operating system and maybe some programs added on. This SSD should not be used for storage. This is just for programs that you want to have a fast launch with. This thing will be a fantastic and fast upgrade to any computer. We have 16 gigs of Vengeance DDR4 RAM. This is going to be uh, pretty much what you're gonna need for any computer going forward at this time. Now, you can go eight gigs, but you are sacrificing a couple of those gigs of RAM to your CPU because of the integrated graphics they use the RAM that you install on the computer. So if you go eight, you end up with a couple less gigs of RAM, which can hurt your performance a little bit when you start using the system. So I usually recommend going with 16 gigs. And right now, this RAM is really cheap. I think I got this for about $75, so well worth it. For storage, we've got a Seagate Barracuda 2 terabyte. Now, when you're doing audio, it doesn't take up a ton of room, but as you do podcast episodes more and more, you are gonna find that you do fill up a drive pretty quick. Two terabytes is recommended to start, and then you can add more on later as you go, or even a network storage device like a NAS. But for right now, two terabytes is gonna get you up and running, and this, these things are dirt cheap at like about 50 bucks. And finally, powering it all is an EVGA 500BR. This is a bronze certified power supply, which is what you need when you're building a computer. You wanna either have bronze, silver, gold, platinum certified. These can get pretty pricey, but at least with the bronze certification, you know that this thing is guaranteed to work and not blow up and take half your computer with it. And finally, we have a relatively cheap case, but a case nonetheless. This thing isn't a gaming case. This is a business workstation case. It's a Thermaltake V100. It's bare bones, it's basic, but you know what? It's a computer case and we've tried to cut some of the costs down. And frankly, for an editing rig, you don't need all the bling, trust me. So let's get going. 
First, we have the motherboard. Inside the box, you're gonna find an IO shield. We'll put that aside for later. You'll find the motherboard. Got a couple cables for hooking up hard drives. You have the how-to guide, which by the way, keep this, do not throw it away. And you have a CD that's out of date and nobody will ever use, but makes a nice coaster. When building your PC, you wanna do it on top of the box that the motherboard comes in. Let's get this out. This is a motherboard. It looks a little overwhelming, but it is actually really simple. This is your CPU socket. With this, you just wanna take off this tension arm and pull it up. That's ready to take a CPU in. Now just give you a ride around the board. This is where your RAM slots are gonna go in. You got power delivery, and that's pretty much all you need to know. So, we're going to open up the CPU, and we're gonna drop the CPU on the ground. So the CPU that I just dropped on the ground and hopefully is okay, comes in a little clamshell packaging. And you can see when you look at it, you can actually see the pins on the bottom of the CPU. Now you have to be very, very careful with these pins. You do not wanna bend them and you definitely do not wanna drop the CPU. Now you will also notice on the corner, you've got a little gold triangle. That triangle will line up with the triangle on the motherboard on the CPU socket. So let's go find that. And I can see the triangle is right down here. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna slot it in. It just drops in, you don't need any pressure. You can give it a little bit of a wiggle. And then you bring down the tension bar and your CPU is installed, just like that. Now time for the RAM. This is Vengeance 16 gig DDR4 RAM. It's pretty cheap but it's actually really decent RAM. This is low profile RAM. You don't necessarily need to get that. It was cheaper for me to get, so I picked it up. Now, when you slot in the RAM sticks, you can see the slots right here. You'll notice there's a little bit of a notch right here in the middle of the slot. You'll also notice there's a little bit of a notch right here in the middle of the RAM. It's slightly off center, so you wanna make sure when you're putting it on that you're pushing down until you hear the satisfying click. Now the second one, we'll put it in. Now your RAM is installed. And now it's time for the CPU cooler. And one of the benefits to actually going with the Ryzen brand is the fact that the CPU coolers actually come with the CPU. And they're not crappy little coolers. These are actually decent coolers. You're not gonna do a lot of overclocking with them. They're gonna actually serve you quite well for this editing rig. Most of the AMD CPU coolers are great for stock use and you will never actually have to change it out. You'll notice on the bottom of the CPU cooler, there is a thermal paste that's sitting there. Now this comes pre-applied. You can either buy your own thermal paste and add it to the CPU, but you don't wanna do both. Either do the pre-installed or do it yourself and wipe off the old pre-installed stuff. Either way, you only need one. The pre-applied is actually pretty cool. It lets you get the job done, and it's actually quite fine. I haven't had any issues with my Ryzen. Now, in order to install this, we have to take off these two brackets here. So now that you've actually pulled off these brackets, you'll see the four holes there. You can keep those in, and that's where you install the cooler. Now, cooler installation is pretty simple. You just wanna make sure that the cooler's not blocking anything. And if I put it down this way, you'll notice it blocks one of the RAM sticks. So we're gonna turn it around and put it the other way. I know this is probably gonna drive a few people nuts by doing it this way, but yeah, it is what it is. Now, the four screws you have, you wanna tighten them in an X pattern. So starting on one, you're gonna just get a couple screws in, then you're gonna go across, you're gonna get this side in, then you're gonna go across. You just wanna get them started. Okay, and once you've got those started, you can go around and you can start tightening them slowly, corner to corner. What this does is it allows the thermal paste that's pre-applied to this to spread evenly across the CPU top. That thermal paste is important so it transfers the heat away from the CPU and into this fan and cooling fins. 
Now that we actually have the CPU and the RAM installed on the board, the next step would be to put this into the case. Now, before you actually start to install it, you actually have to do a little bit of prep work to the case. So we'll go through that right now. It's pretty straightforward. It's getting your standoffs ready to put in your board and it's just making sure all the wires are out of the way. So let's do that. Okay, so this is the inside of the case. You're gonna notice you've got these pre-installed standoffs. These things are what keep the board off of the metal so you, it doesn't short out on itself. Now, it is great to get a case with pre-installed standoffs. It's awesome, actually. They're a real pain in the butt to put in and they're time consuming, but one of the issues that I'm having with this is if you see my board and I put it in, you're gonna notice there's some extra standoffs kicking around. They're not in the right spot. So that creates a couple problems. One is I can't screw it down all the way. There might be some standoffs in spots that will actually cause a problem, possibly shorting out the board. So I gotta make sure all the ones that aren't supposed to be under the board are out and all the ones that are, are in, like right here. Okay, now we've got all of the standoffs where they need to be. Of course, this isn't gonna be a problem for the board and neither of the ones at the bottom. You can just leave those in just in case you expand later. The next job you have to do is actually one that a lot of people forget about. And that is putting in the IO shield in that little hole down there. So let's get that done. Now these things come in varying sizes and well, quality. This one is an extremely cheap one. So <laughs> this is going to be something that, well, the more you spend on a board, the nicer it is. This one, well, I've seen better. Anyways, easy to install. All you have to do is get it in and it literally just snaps into place. It's just like that. Now it won't come out and you'll see it'll just rattle in there. Now you've got the motherboard. Obviously, this is what you just installed for the I.O. shield. Now with the motherboard, we're just gonna slot it in to where the I.O. shield is and place it down. Once it's in, you're gonna notice the I.O. shield will be well populated with all of the goodies back there. And up front here on the board, you're gonna notice down here, you can actually see the standoff poking through there that you can put a screw into. Perfect. So here you just wanna screw in all of the appropriate screws. And on this board, if you end up buying this board, you have them two, you have three rows of two. So at the bottom, about a third of the way down and up at the top. And now that all your screws are in, well, your computer's basically almost complete. Well, kinda, we gotta get the power supply in and then you're pretty much complete. Looking pretty good. I'll take that out, I think. What, that part of the computer? I don't think so. No, it no, can't be. Okay, so let's get the power supply in and let's start getting this ready. So here's your power supply. That's a lot of wires. Don't be overwhelmed by this. It's actually relatively simple when you get it started, okay? Out of all of these, most of these are power delivery for your hard drives and other little goodies that you can add into your computer later on, like graphics card. But the only ones you really gotta worry about is this one. This is your power delivery for the board. And then you're gonna need a four pin connector. This one has two four pin here. So you're just gonna need one of these. So don't worry, we're gonna get this in. So between the power delivery for that and the power delivery for this, everything else is pretty much for your hard drives and other goodies. So at the back of the system, you can see this is the CPU is on the other side. You're gonna just slot this power supply in on the bottom. Now, there are other systems of getting your power supply in by other manufacturers, depending on what case you get. Just look at the directions for your case and it will tell you exactly how to mount your power supply. It's simple, this just takes four little screws, one, two, three, four, and this will be installed. Now from the back, you're gonna see that you can actually put all of these cables through these holes and they can plug into the motherboard just from here. So let's get our two cables that we require, two fours and our 24 pin. We're gonna put them through the holes they need to be. This one goes through here and this one is gonna go through here. 
So the 24 pin goes like that and in. It can be a little bit of a pain in the butt doing this for the first time, but you just wanna get that in, kinda push it until it stops going. <laughs> All right, and now up here, you can see the four pin, okay? You got a double four pin right there. That's gonna be going right into this little spot right up here, okay? Perfect. Now, if you recall, we pushed all of these cables in through the back while we were starting out the case. So we're gonna unwrap those and we're gonna get all those plugged in right now. So starting out, this is for USB 3.0 and this has a very specific connector. Now, one of the things to point out when you're building a computer is rarely does anything plug into a place where it's not supposed to be. So 3.0 connector is somewhere around here. So we're just gonna pass that through. And then a lot of these small ones are gonna go at the bottom of the board. So we're just gonna plug these through. Uh, we can plug them through right here. And put them on this side of this. And we're gonna plug these through this hole. Now the reason I'm doing this through specific holes is because you wanna be able to manage your cables in the end so everything kinda of looks neat and tidy. If everything looks like a dog's breakfast back here, you may not be able to put the back panel on. So let's turn it around. We're gonna see where all the cable connector is going. 3.1 goes right here. Just give that a little bit of a push and it's in. All these little guys are gonna go along here and all of them are marked at the bottom here. So you really gotta get your glasses on to read exactly where these little guys go. Now these are power switches as well as LED lighting. So if you have any LED lighting on the uh, case, this is where it's gonna be. Also your reset switch. And I believe this is your, yeah, this is your LED. So let's get that done really quick. So really we're pretty much done almost everything. There's only a couple things left to do is, one, we wanna plug in our fans. So you can see the CPU cooler has its own fan. Now this is gonna have a dedicated spot on this board to plug it into because it needs to know there's a fan on the CPU, otherwise it won't wanna boot up. So if you look up here, you're gonna see CPU fan, really hard to see, but you're gonna have to take my word for it and this uh, will plug in right there. So now we also have one back fan that we're gonna actually be hooking up as well. And there we go. Fans are all set up. All we gotta do now is plug in the two drives into the SATA ports, and this computer is ready for a test boot. Now you're gonna be noticing back here, it kinda looks like a dog's breakfast. Don't worry, we're gonna get to it. But first, we've got a Kingston SSD, 240 gig, and we've got the Seagate, two terabyte. Now what we're gonna be doing is installing them on these sleds. It's very simple. You screw it down to the sled, screw it down to the sled like that, and you just put the sled back in, and you can hook up the cables from there. So let's get that done. Now you've got the hard drives installed on these sleds. Now one of the things I do, do need to point out when you're mounting it, you wanna make sure that this part is accessible for when you put this, this sled in the computer so you can get your wires out into the motherboard. So let's go both drives in. Now you have your hard drives. These are SATA connectors, SATA power connectors. You just wanna grab one of them and it's like a weird little L shape or a long L shape. You gotta make sure that this lines up with the one that's on the hard drive. You'll notice the one on the hard drive has the same, but you gotta be careful. These are little plastic connectors that will break if you're not careful. So you just gotta make sure you're being a little bit careful when installing these. We're gonna do that one, and we're gonna do the one right below it. So now both hard drives have power. So now these are SATA data connectors. So these ones are power, these ones are data. So these are gonna to connect to your motherboard and your motherboard to your hard drives. So we're gonna do that right now. So once again, you've got the same type of connection with the weird L. So you just wanna line that up with, there you go. And the same thing, down here. Now these cables, 
You can route them through the bottom. And you'll notice these are your SATA connectors here. They're kind of going on, they're not straight down, they're coming off at an angle, which can be a real pain in the butt when you have an L-shaped connector like this. So do the best you can, just try not to break any of the tabs off. There you go. You have finished your very first computer. Looks pretty sick. Now we gotta make sure that it actually boots up. So one of the things you wanna make sure when you're trying this out, you wanna turn on the power supply. A lot of times you get to build a computer, you forget to turn that on, you go to try the actual button on the front of the case and it doesn't start. Now from the front, we're just going to hit the power. Let's see if it posts. I think we have a computer. All right, so that is how to build a Ryzen entry-level editing rig for your podcast. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, $430 gets it done, and you get a pretty sweet editing rig that you can actually upgrade very simply. It's a really versatile CPU, and for a few extra dollars, you can easily upgrade this whole thing to actually handle video as well. So what I'm gonna do down in the description, I'm gonna have all the parts for this rig placed down in the description. I'm also gonna have parts for an upgraded version of this rig that can handle video. And it's not gonna be that much more expensive, but yes, it's gonna be a more powerful rig. So watch out for that if you've got a few extra dollars to spend. Thanks for joining me. I'm gonna get this thing put all back together. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video.